Today, we will be showing you how to create a simple motion control application using the PowerTools Studio application from Control Techniques. To do this, you will need to make sure your drive is connected and powered up, and connected via Ethernet cord. You will also need to make sure your drive is disabled in order to properly complete this setup. Now that your drive is disabled and your laptop and drive are properly connected, you can now open the PowerTools Studio. In the top left corner, select File and click New. A screen will pop up with the drive options. You will select the model based on the sticker label on your drive. It is important to make sure that the model you select is the one that corresponds to the one found on your drive label. In this how-to, we will be using the M750, so that is the model we will be selecting. Now that you've chosen the correct drive, PowerTools Studio will open and a navigation tree will appear on the left side of the screen. You will want to click on the Hardware tab and work your way down. For this simple motion control application configuration, you again will want to make sure your drive model and motor type properly reflect the same drive model and motor type found on the sticker label of your drive. Next, select the encoder type. This too is found on the sticker label of the drive. For this M750 drive, we will need to select the NDAT encoder option. Since this is just a single cable solution, you will next want to change the baud rate to faster than 500K. The thermistor is coming through the NDAT, so we will want to go to the thermistor type, which is under configuration, and select the encoder option. Once that's taken care of, you will then want to make sure that the PTI-210 is being shown in the proper slot. We have it in slot 2, so we will change that so it can be recognized. And with that, the hardware is completely set up. Now we will continue down the tab tree on the left of the screen and select Setup and User Units. And we will configure the units for 1mm and 1mm per rev. This must be set up based on your gear ratio, so make sure to make the proper adjustments to reflect that. We are now going to change the velocity time scale from minutes to seconds, since most motion applications occur over seconds and not minutes. And with that, we now have our hardware set up and the proper user units programmed. Next, we will go down to the I.O. setup to configure the switch for homing. On the right side, you will want to click on Home. Home Sensor Trigger will show up and you will want to select that as that is what we will be mapping to. On the left side of the screen, you will see Inputs. Click on that, then you will want to drag the Drive Input 4 over to the right side and over the Home Sensor Trigger. You will now see that both are now properly assigned to each other and that they are designated with an active polarity. We will now move down to the Motion tab and select our jogs. For jog, we will set the velocity at 10 mm and the acceleration and deceleration at 100 mm. Scroll to Homes on the left tab where we are going to program a reverse home. Many people ask how to program a reverse home and the process is incredibly simple. When programming the velocity speed, just put a negative sign in front of the desired velocity. In this instance, we are setting it for negative 3 mm, with an acceleration and deceleration of 30 mm. Next, select Calculated Offset and make sure that the home reference is set to Sensor. Now it is time to configure our indexes. For this application setup, we will make two indexes. First, we will make an Advanced Index and we will change the index type to Absolute with a position of 100 mm and a velocity of 45 mm, an acceleration and deceleration of 300 mm. Having just input all that, you will see it displayed in the profile below. 
With that done, we will now configure our second index, which we will label as the return index. We will click to make sure that this too is set as an absolute index, and we will be positioning it at zero, with a different velocity and acceleration deceleration than the advanced index we just configured. Once everything for our return index is inputted, we will have everything configured. Our final step for this setup will be saving the configuration so that we can download it right to the drive. To do so, you will see right underneath the option label on the toolbar on the top of the screen, there's a download symbol. Click on that and it will automatically scan to see what drives are connected. Click on the device you are using and then click download. The configuration that was just set up through the PowerTools Studio is now downloaded and ready to use on your PTI 210 module. Once the drive reinitializes and comes back on, you can then initiate the motion controls through the PowerTools Studio application on your laptop. We will now demonstrate how to use the PowerTools Studio software to initialize the motor control with the inputs we just created. We will first go to the Jog tab and click on the right pointing arrow. This will initialize jog motion. And as long as this is held down, the jog will be moving. Next, we will click on the Home tab and hit Start, and it will now go to what we configured for Home, which was zero. Now, we will go to our Advanced Index and click Start. You can now see that the position feedback is now displaying that speed we configured. Finally, we will click the Return Index tab and click Start. It should go from 100 to zero. This has been a how-to and demonstration for creating a simple motion control application using the PowerTools Studio by Control Techniques. For more how-tos and tech tips, visit our YouTube channel at Galco TV. And for more information on our products used in this video, visit us at galco.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every week.